Now, this is what we like to hear, and we know the Baltimore Ravens needed this more than anything. Lamar Jackson, he returned to practice today. Team Keep It Clean, we're going to get into it and what this means for the Baltimore Ravens. I mean, you know what it means for the Baltimore Ravens, but we got plenty more stuff to talk about. Before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, and man... <laughs> Y'all did it yesterday. Thank you so much for going crazy, leaving a like on the video. Y'all do not understand how much that helps. I appreciate y'all. If you want to go crazy with it again today, especially with us getting this great news about Lamar Jackson, go for it. Go for it. Appreciate it. Now, um, of course, we got the Broncos coming up, and the Broncos got a really, really good defense. But the Baltimore Ravens got a really, really good Offense, but that offense it just would not move the same if they did not have their starting quarterback Lamar Jackson, who missed Wednesday's practice, and then he missed Thursday's practice. So we started getting a little concerned, but we say, "Hey, fr Friday is the ultimate day. That's the day that will let us know what the deal is." And Lamar Jackson returned, and thank goodness he returned because well, you already know, but thank goodness he returned because he just. This is the MVP, not only of the Baltimore Ravens, but of the NFL. Two-time MVP. I mean, you already know. He's been broke countless amount of records. He's going to break countless more. But Lamar Jackson is needed. We talk a lot of times about things that are not the end-all, be-all, and different situations that are not the end-all, be-all for the Baltimore Ravens. But Lamar Jackson, he certainly is a player that is the end-all, be-all for the Baltimore Ravens. If there was no Lamar Jackson, then, yeah, uh, you know. But with Lamar Jackson in for the Baltimore, yeah, you know. So it was a beautiful thing that he's back. But it didn't stop there. It, it, it didn't stop there. As we know, the Baltimore Ravens, their defensive line is all kinds of beat up. Michael Pierce out. Brent Urban left the game the other day with a concussion, been missing practice. Broderick Washington, he was missing practice yesterday. Uh, Travis Jones, he was missing practice. They say yesterday in practice, the only healthy defensive lineman on the roster was Namdi Matabike. That was it. So today we all looking around waiting for that practice update like, oh, who is anybody going to come? Is somebody going to come back? Is uh, the D lineman going to show up? Anybody? And let's listen to this. Says, um, Broderick Washington and Travis Jones, they both returned to practice on Friday. So the news with Lamar Jackson, I mean, that, that was good enough for most of us, but it got even better with those guys returning to practice as well. Because, again, we need it. We need it. We need that depth. Now, um, he did say, uh, this is from Jeff Zrebik, by the way. He said the only Ravens he didn't see practicing uh, was Jalen Armand Davis. Uh, and also Brent Urban. So I guess Brent Urban uh, did not clear concussion protocol yet. Um, so he he's gonna be out for this game. He ain't practiced all. He ain't practiced on Friday. Yeah, he nine times, nine point nine times out of ten, he won't be playing in this game. Now we've reached my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions. Without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. First question came from my guy DJ. He said, "What's up, Engraven? This is my first question ever." Oh, I like that. I always love when new people send in questions because it's, it's super refreshing. Now, when old people send in questions, too, I still love it now. But when new people send in questions, it's like, oh, okay, somebody, yeah, that's cool. But anyway, he said, I did join the Patreon, but I'm still trying to figure it out. Hope you and the family are healthy and congrats on the baby. Oh, appreciate it. And I'm, I'm sure you'll get it figured out, and it, but it's all good either way. He said, now, let's get to the question and heads up. This might be a long one. The Ravens have lost three games this year, and only one was I genuinely upset about. Ravens should not have lost to the Raiders, and that was a complete collapse on all three phases of the ball. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> And there was a very questionable cause in that one. But then you even think about the Chiefs game. That game, too, there was some very questionable calls in that one. Now, look, I don't like to be one of them people that, oh, yeah, it's all about the call. But Because it was not all about the calls. But there was some calls in that, like in the Chiefs game, how they kept calling Ronnie Stanley for what? Illegal formation, I think. And then the Raiders game, oh, there was such a bad pass interference that they called on Brandon Stevens where it was not P and him and Devontae Adams was like going back and forth a little bit. Um, and I know it was another, oh, they called a face mask on um, Matabike, I think, that took away a sack, and then they showed the replay, and it wasn't a face mask. He grabbed him here, but I don't think they picked the flag. But anyway, let's keep going. Let's keep on going. He said, um, but even though we lost to the Chiefs and the Browns, both games I truly felt we should have won, and it clears 
Uh, oh, and it's clear, Ravens are the better team. I think Spags is the only defensive coordinator in the league that truly gives Lamar problems, and the Browns are one of the only two D-lines that can really get back and put hands on Lamar, Steelers being the other one. The Chiefs, it just felt like a couple of plays here and a couple of plays there, and that game was always outside of the toe. Ooh, that was a tough one. Now, something you said about the, um, the defensive lines. Uh, you talked about how... Spags is the only defensive coordinator in the league that gives Lamar problems, and Brown's one of the only two defensive lines that can really get back and put hands on Lamar. Now, um, something that I've been seeing a lot more of, and I've been thinking, oh, man, especially with Daniel Falele, um, that he, he has been improving overall as a right guard, but he's still been struggling a lot. And shout out to all the film guys because I've been seeing him put tape of everything up, especially this week, and he's still been struggling a lot, a whole lot. Now, another thing, too, that we have noticed, even without the film, while, I, while we watch the games live, is that with Lamar, there's been a lot more time, especially recently, he's been getting pressured a lot. But he's had to roll out. He had to scramble. He had to make some people miss and whatnot. Offensive line and pass protection. Wow. And it's crazy because he's still been getting it done. He's still been getting it done. But the offensive line, they've been struggling in pass protection a lot. But anyway, continuing. Um, he said, but this Browns game, easily one of the worst performances by the secondary in recent years. I say it's up there when Marlowe let Jamal have a career day. Oh, I remember that game. Uh, but with Marlowe and Wiggs missing, it almost seems like they had to force upper management hands to make some moves. Our secondary is not great, but a great edge rusher definitely helps mitigate that problem and vice versa. I believe based off of cap space, free agency, and trades, we could or should make two more moves or acquisitions before the playoffs. Well, I mean, you, you're talking before the playoffs, but uh, if you're talking about trades, that has to happen Tuesday by 4 p.m. is the deadline, I believe. So, like now. Um, but I do believe they will make at least one more move. And one more move of even more significance than the uh, Deontay Johnson move. Not saying that wasn't a move of significance, but I believe they'll give up a little more higher draft capital to acquire somebody. Else. That's, just, that's just me, though. I ain't hear nothing. I don't, that's just me. Anyway, he said, time for the question. Oh, my God. We didn't even get to the question yet? I thought we were there already. He said, I'm sure you're aware of our recent history of second round picks and what they have or should I say haven't produced for us. But given how close we are to reaching that final goal, do you think it will be a good idea for the Ravens to trade their first round pick for an above uh, and beyond to great edge or DB? Because here's the thing. For edge, yeah. I would say yeah. For DB, I would say no. But for edge, yeah. Anyway, continuing. He said, because here's the thing. If we were to go to and win a Super Bowl, our draft pick is basically a second rounder. That's true. Uh, the last pick in the draft is easily replaceable with a high second. Maybe give uh, up the one and do a swap of the twos. Or just trade the two and we can always get the four max comp pick. So if we're going to have 11 as projected, it wouldn't be crazy to go out and get a Miles Garrett or maybe a Jair Alexander. Just because we give up a first doesn't mean we can't use that second or other picks to acquire a first rounder next year like the Chiefs did this year. Maybe we'll just hit up the Bills since they like to help other teams so much. <laughs> yeah, like how they gave the Chiefs Xavier Worthy. We ain't forget Buffalo. We ain't forget at all. But, yeah, I would be more than willing for the Ravens to give up a second-round pick. But even if it was a first-round pick for the right – for a first-round pick, that ain't just for anybody now. That ain't just for anybody. That got to be the right player for a first. Uh, even for a second, though, too. But I, I would be more than willing for the Baltimore Ravens to get that up. Uh, he said, um, all I'm saying is I'd be willing to give up a first or a second and then a little bit more to go out and get a true game-changer piece if that means we win now. I agree. I'm with you 1,000%. Now, we all already know we win every 12, so people can miss me with that. What about next year? Man, if we got the pieces, Lamar going to figure it out one way or another. Oh, I like this guy, DJ. I like him. He says, sorry for the long one, but I've been watching your videos for a couple years now. And finally, got the courage to reach out. Appreciate the weekly slash daily content. Thank you for always giving me something to watch about my, I mean, our Ravens. Praying for you and the family. Deuces. Hashtag Keaton Mitchell. Shout out to that boy, man. Shout out to you, DJ. Appreciate it. I know we all looking for even more ways to keep it clean, right? Well, let me introduce you to Mando. Mando is a whole body deodorant literally for everywhere. Your neck, your back, your armpits, your legs, your feet, and anywhere where the sun don't shine. We said they're everywhere, right? Because unfortunately, body odor doesn't just stay in one place. But fortunately, Mando doesn't either because it's for everywhere. Here's Mando's 4-in-1 acidified cleansing bar. It's a 5-ounce bar that does the work of shampoo, face wash, body wash, and deodorant. It's clinically proven to control odor for 24 hours. And it comes in three cologne 
quality scents. Mount Fuji is fresh and woodsy. Bourbon leather is sweet and sophisticated. And Pro Sport is clean and citrusy. Now here's my personal favorite from Mando, their bourbon leather body wash. Every time I use it, it got me feeling like a brand new man. And then it keeps me smelling really good too. So that's a nice bonus. But Mando's whole body deodorant is powerful enough for the toughest body odor, but gentle enough to use everywhere. Allowing you to put Mando on those special somewheres without any worry because Mando is aluminum free, baking soda free, cruelty free, dye free, and it's vegan. But how can you get your hands on it? Well, I'm getting ready to tell you. Mando's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, and two free products of your choice. My choices ended up being the deodorant wipes and my personal favorite again, the body wash. And another bonus, you get free shipping. Luckily, I have a discount code to help you get hooked on my favorite smelling whole body deodorant on the market. New customers get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack. Use code engraven at shopmando.com. S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O.com. The boy DJ started us off right, ain't he? All right, next question came from my guy James. He said, hey, engraven, hope all is well. I was wondering, if you were the coach and Keaton Mitchell was fully ready this Sunday, would you still sit him? Because we know we have a short week so he can play his first game on Thursday, limiting the chance of an injury for our other running backs and Keaton Mitchell. I would hate to see Keaton come back and have to play Sunday and then f play four days later where there tend to be more injuries. I would also hate to see King Henry get hurt from a short week. I think saving Keaton for Thursday to take away some reps will be smart. Thoughts? I think you answered your own question because you said if you were the coach and Keaton Mitchell was fully ready this Sunday, Boom, there you go. Fully ready this Sunday. That means there were no setbacks. There were no issues. He was fully ready. So, yeah, I, I would have him ready. I'm, oh, go go ahead and give it a go. You want to do what? You want to do kick return, Keaton? You want to get some reps on offense? Cool. I mean, it ain't like if he came out there and played, it ain't like he going to be a workhorse for the team. No, they got Derrick Henry. No, they got Justice Hill for that. I get what you're saying, though, because, yeah, they got a quick game in a couple of days. They really do. Um, so that's a quick turnaround. This is against a Bengals team that's they down in the depths right now. So we would love for the Ravens to stomp them out and keep them there. But Bengals going to be fighting, man. They, they, they really going to be fighting. But um, so, yeah, I would still play him. I would play him. Oh, you play the whole game. You play so many. Times. No, they're going to ease him back in whenever that time ends up coming. Next question came from my guy, Andre. He said, hey, Graven, hope all is well with you and the family. First, I would like to say thank you for your well-rounded analysis. Oh, I appreciate it, Andre. Thank you. I don't know if it's well-rounded, but uh, no, nah, I appreciate it, man. He said, my question is, what do you think about the Ravens going for Robert Sala as defensive coordinator? Now, for me, I, I think any changes at defensive coordinator, I don't think that they would really happen until after this season. Um, because with the Baltimore Ravens, again, I think they're going to be extra loyal to Zach Orr. Um, despite all the issues and all the struggles with the defense uh but if they're gonna make any significant changes like a new brand new defensive coordinator they wouldn't do it until the offseason because you bring in a new defensive coordinator that's a brand new defense that you got to teach that's a whole new scheme whole new terminology and everything so that wouldn't happen until after this year's over this question came from my guy nigel he said the greatest slogan team keep it clean uh i told you marcus ain't the problem and now i see why eddie jackson was a free agent sheesh defense will be fine soon as they start catching the ball monk gets away from the run when the line which i said isn't off the hook yet be struggling with good fronts but keep mitchell's on the way it'll be thunder and lightning and parent can't wait uh deontay johnson he gonna be good because nelly can't see the field no more and bateman need to wear a visor <laughs> he said bateman need to wear a visor and stop letting lamar jackson down i still want Lattimore, who's a better corner than brandon stevens i'm out like the ravens dbs when a ball is in the air or like Rashad Bateman in that game against the Browns when the ball was in the air too. But again, uh, breaking this down, he said Marcus Williams ain't the problem. Um, yeah, we've been saying like with Marcus Williams has has been struggling. There've been some plays where he's been a little timid, but the overall problem to me is the scheme. It, it, it's been the scheme this whole year. It's been, and it's been issues, been miscommunications literally all year. Uh, one of my guys pointed out to me that the miscommunications they haven't just been happening on the bad plays. They've been happening on some good plays too. Where Ravens still been miscommunicating. I'm like, man, I, I ain't even realized that. But hey, that's what the film guys are for. So it, that that's still an issue um, that definitely needs a, a lot of work. Um, he said defense will be fine as soon as they start catching the ball. That'll help a lot, but. What happens when guys are running wide open like guys run wide open literally every single week? What happens when the defensive backs are playing uh, super far back on the receivers when it's a, a third and four? And that's all the, the offenses need. So the, the, the receivers are run to the sticks, run to the first down marker, turn around. OK, hit me. And boom, it's a, like an easy first down. So it's again, it's it, it, part of it is catching the ball now. 
but a lot of it is scheme. It's, it's, it's a lot deeper than just catching the ball, as, as I know you already know. Um, but, yeah, as far as Keaton Mitchell, yeah, we can't wait for him to be back. Oh, I mean, he's, like, right there. Like, we just waiting on announcement now. Um, he said Deontay Johnson going to be good because Nelly can't see the field. No, like, Nelly, well, Nelly ain't do nothing wrong. I mean, he had a couple of drops here and there, but Nelly don't get many opportunities. And Nelly been super efficient this year. So I, I ain't got no problem with Nelly. I do not mind upgrading that third wide receiver spot, but I ain't got no problem with Nelly. Next question came from Zero. He said, hey, Raven, do you think Lamar is not practicing on Wednesday and Thursday will be a problem? Um, I can see how it could have issues, but... As long as he came back on Friday, then, hey, we should be good to go. He said, and also, do you think Deontay Johnson's chemistry issues will affect the team at all? Thanks a lot. and love the video. Appreciate it, Zaire. Um, I think it will, but it's, that's why you got to build it. You got to build up that chemistry. If you make a trade like this, then you, you realize and you understand, like, okay, it's going to take a little bit for him to get acclimated to him to really fully become a part of this team and this offense and for him to get adjusted. So, you know, that takes time. It ain't nothing that just happens, boom, like that. I'm like, hey, sometimes it does. With him being from Florida, maybe it will. So, you know, I, I, take, I take all that back. With him being from Tampa, like, okay, he, he going to get adjusted very, very quickly to the Florida Ravens. So, you know, I, I ain't even worried about that. He also said, I don't even know how to cope with this loss, man. But after this loss, I think we 100% have to trade for a pass rusher, a defensive back, uh, secondary player. Uh, I was telling people all offseason that we were going to miss Geno Stone and Jadavian Clowney. But my question for you is, do you, think, do you truly think we can win the Super Bowl this year? Yes, for sure. I really do. Uh, and again, Ravens ain't done. If they get Jadavian Clowney back, that oh, that would be great. I would. This is just me. Maybe a lot of y'all may disagree, and that's cool. I still love y'all. But I would much rather back a Jadavian Clowney than a Zadarius Smith. I don't know, man. I just, I don't. Maybe it's just I'm, I'm, I'm not like. I feel like Zadarius Smith would be cool, and but I feel like Jadavian Clowney, like that would be the one, man. I really do. Anyway. Um, he said, uh, hopefully we can turn things around, but it's, but how it's looking right now, we might not even get past Buffalo or Houston and definitely not the chiefs. I love this team, but man, something's got to change. Have a great day and love the video. Appreciate it. Zaire night. Um, no, yeah, I, I could see how you would say that, but I mean, with Buffalo, like you, you done seen us against Buffalo already and look at Houston. Houston just got beat by the Jets, but at the same time, we did get beat by the one and what well, they, they were one and six Browns. We got beat by the Raiders. So, I mean, can we really, really talk that much? A mirror loss. Next question came from my guy Michael. He said, hey, team, keep it clean. Hope everybody's doing well and families are doing well, especially for you and Graven. Now, I have a question. The way we lost to Cleveland, do you think this could be the way we lose to Kansas City to head to the Super Bowl? I do because last year we had the number one defense and our offense let us down this year. We had the number one offense or close to it and our defense will let us down. Uh, but this time, uh, oh, the, 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 the defense will let us down. But this time, like last time, it'll be the coach. What are all your thoughts? No, because... This is going to get cleaned up. We ain't going to have no number one defense or anything like that. But this, this whole defense is it, going to get cleaned up a lot. It will because the right, like this is the Ravens' year for sure. It, it has to be. It only makes sense with the way that everything is really lining up. So, yeah, this, like, even, um, who was it? Young Thug. Young Thug get, get, getting out of jail, beating his whole Rico charge, and his name is Jeffrey Lamar. Wait, I, when I saw I said, whoa. So, yeah, this, this is all year. Next question came from my guy, Top Dollar Row. He said, what's up, Engraven? I got something to say. I believe Ravens are good. Certain stuff has to be handled. First, Brandon Stevens got to go. He gets beat. Don't matter if it's a vet, two- to three-year player, or a rookie. Oh, my goodness. He said, uh, Nate Wiggins needs to play. Brandon Ste he needs to play at Brandon Stevens' spot and put Brandon Stevens on the side uh, with Marlon so Marlon can help Brandon Stevens because he needs all the help that he can get in that right spot. I'm not trying to hear we drafted you as a safety so your ball hawk skill should be high. Well, maybe they should put him at safety. Hey, couldn't hurt. Then he wouldn't have to turn around. So anyway, he said, I believe we could use a pass rush player with the loss of Clowney, but we need a safety immediately. How are we paying $70 million to a guy that didn't get a pick this year and only had one last year where he got multiple picks, uh, and that was his first year uh, with us? Unacceptable. Uh, we, got it. we got him to be a ball hawk, and Eddie just looks straight lost. I don't believe he's playing his best. Buda Baker, where are you? Come to the flock. And we got Deontay. Hopefully he plays great. But our uh, dying need is to change those three players, Brandon, Marcus, and Eddie. And the edge wouldn't hurt, but we are number one in stopping the run. This is a secondary problem. Uh, when that gets addressed, we'll be the team that if they rock with Brandon at cornerback another week, I'm going to lose it. Oh, oh, you getting ready to lose it then. You, you, you getting ready to lose it then because Brandon Stevens will be in that line, that starting lineup. 
I guarantee you. So just be prepared in a couple days. Uh, he said, I know it's been a lot, but I've been feeling this way for a long minute, regardless of the, of the wins. But thank you for having something like this to express my feelings. Hashtag let's go flock. That's what it's about, man. And I appreciate you expressing your feelings um, with, with the secondary. Yeah. So, like they, they can't stay at the bottom forever. They, 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 they can't stay there. like this. I mean, it's been eight games and that secondary is it's been rough. And now I know situationally some things have, but the secondary has been rough. It's been really, really rough. But what better opportunity, what perfect way to get them boys going again and get them boys right to fix a lot of wrongs, especially when Ravens secondary and defense been down in the dumps than against the Broncos. Next question came from my boy, Chef Boy RT. He said, hope all is well with you and the family. What just happened? And this was right after the Browns game. He said, I'm so disappointed and embarrassed in this Ravens defense. Ravens defense is used to cause turnovers. And not only that, they used to return them for big games or even touchdowns. We used to beat up on quarterbacks and put fear in teams. Now we have the Zach Orlett defense and we are being picked on and cooked so easily. Before week one, I was agreeing with you saying that we have to give Zach all time and can't overreact in the first few weeks. And that was still true. But then he said, uh, it's been eight games and honestly, I'm done. I can't be mad at anybody that says that. I, I'm not mad at anybody that says that. But, again, that, that's why I said we, we got to give it six to seven weeks to really see how Zach Orr is, and we saw that. Like, I mean, even though he did show us kind of from jump, but still, we saw it after the first six, seven, eight weeks, and it's, oh, okay, this is who he is. This is what the defense is. Okay. Uh, anyway, he said the middle of the field in the past defense as a whole has been getting cooked every week. Uh, week one, we decided that Malik Harris and Roquan Smith were our two best uh, linebackers. Let's hope that they can keep up. Uh, where is she? Oh, oh no! Oh, okay, my fault. That oh, he did a little. He was a little petty with this one. He said, "I thought it was a mistype, but it wasn't." <laughs> he said, "Week one, we decided that Malik Harrison and Roquan Smith were our two best cornerbacks, and let's hope that they keep up with Rasheed Rice and Xavier Worthy." Who thought that was a good idea? <laughs> he said, "Week two, we got smoked by Gardner Minshew, Brock Bowers, and Devonte Adams. How many passes do they have to connect until you realize they are playing three versus eleven and still beating you? Week three, we started off on fire, and in the fourth quarter, we realized that." He had the over on Dak passing yards and sabotaged the team. Week, week uh, four was a beatdown, and I thought that moment was going to be a turning point, but it definitely wasn't. Week five, he did absolutely nothing but get destroyed by Burrow chasing Higgins. Week six uh, wasn't good, but the offense was. Week seven, the offense cooked, and the defense finally caused some turnovers and was playing great until the fourth quarter. He forgot he started Baker in fantasy and needed all the points that he could get, so he gave up everything. <laughs> And here we are after losing to the Browns out of all teams. I've seen enough. He got to go, and he has to take – oh, yeah, he could take his buddy Eddie Jackson with him. Who decided benching Marcus is the way to go? I'm not mad at it, but I just want to know, was it Harbaugh or Orr? If it was Orr, why not bench Eddie Jackson too? I think it was Harbaugh, but it could have been either one. He said, what does Brandon Stevens even do? Oh, well, he be there around and receiving. He be making some good tackles too. But at cornerback, he be, be struggling, but – Anyway, he said, what does, uh, uh, oh, I don't know, but EDC needs to fire Zach and trade Marcus, cut Eddie, cut Malik, and trade for a pass rusher. My goodness, he was going off. After all that, my question is, are you in shape to play DB for the Ravens right now? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'll give you a good two, three plays in a row. Then I'm going to need a little breather because the NFL players, they're a little fast. I, now, I got some speed there, but I'm going to need a little breather. I might be on, on the oxygen machine after a couple plays or whatnot, but then I'll be back out there. And I ain't afraid to get physical, too. If I got to tackle, got to play press or whatnot, got to tackle, so I ain't afraid of none of that stuff. So let's get it. Anyway, he said, and just like 32, 39, 40, and the fat off of Roquan's belly needs to be, I'm out. Next question came from my guy Zega. He said, I hate that they lie in the press conferences. They asked Kyle Hamilton about the defense, and he said, we have everything we could want in the locker room. That's a lie because old buddy got to go like last year. I can't even think of his name, but everybody know who I'm talking about. They should have traded him for uh, instead of the fifth-round pick. Um, I, I think uh, if they came out and told the truth, because it, it can almost be like a lose-lose almost. Um, because if they came out and told the truth, it, and it would depend on who it was and what they said too. But some people wouldn't be able to take it if they came out and, and said the truth. Like, but as a leader of the team, you you don't want to come out and say, especially be that being Kyle Hamilton or if it was Roquan Smith, you don't want to come out and say, man, um, this guy who plays for us at this position, he's terrible. He, he, he's been so bad this year. He is really bringing us down. No, you, as a leader, you, you can't say that, especially to the media. Like, oh, my goodness, it would just – it would look so bad. And, we, hey, we all want truth. We all want honesty, but – as a leader, you want to be the one to pump up your team. You don't want to tear them down. 
Like, I'm sure behind closed doors when the cameras are off and they're not in press conferences, a lot of different stuff is being said from the coaches, from players, from all of that. But when the cameras are live in those press conferences, you can't just say anything. Next question came from my guy, Martin. Or should I say Harbaugh? He said, uh, you caught me. This is John Harbaugh Burner account. Just finished telling the guys we are not bringing in Deontay Johnson to have 10 catches a game. We're about to run the ball and play prevent defense. We are also planning on switching Derrick Henry to wide receiver and Deontay Johnson to running back. Got to play mind games with the opponent and we won't be the Ravens if we play to their strengths, LOL. With that out of the way, on a serious note, when I saw the Deontay Johnson trade, I was a little deflated because I thought that was going to be our only move. But after seeing what we gave up, I was like, heck yeah, welcome aboard, Deontay. I was more excited for the fact that we got him so low. If I can ever afford a new car, I'm going to have to get EDC to help me get the price down. Oh, I like that. Uh, he said, but I really hope that we go all the way in. i like for the Ravens to trade for Legereus Le Sneed or Marshawn Lattimore. Uh, the Jets are 2-6, and six, so maybe uh, we can see if Sauce Gardner is available or maybe Christian Gonzalez from the Patriots. What do you think about any of those guys? I don't necessarily care who we get. I just pray EC will get us some secondary help. Now, with Sauce Gardner, I'll say no because he is a holder. He's been a holder. He be holding more than Marlon Humphrey holds. And you know Marlon Humphrey be holding a lot. Sauce holds a lot more than him. And they actually be calling him. This year they've been calling him. For them holes and stuff But imagine if he was on the Ravens And you know the Ravens already get called for a lot of okie doke stuff So if he was on the Ravens He would get called for even more stuff than he already get called for now. Oh yeah so it, it, it would be rough um, But Legereus Sneed uh, I wouldn't mind Physical corner He could tackle um, Ain't afraid to press Like he would, he would fit right in um, so if the, the Ravens send something for him, like a little third round pick or whatnot, then yeah, I wouldn't mind that. With the Jets winning last night, you know they 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 gonna feel a new sense of uh of urgency to, to win again. Um, so they they got a little bit of life left in their season. But anyway, um, Christian Gonzalez, oh that would be a really good one. You know, Patriots ain't giving him up though. Uh, for none less than a first time thing, but that that would be a really really good one. He said, also I want to give a shout out to you all, all off season. You kept begging the Ravens to go and get go out and get Justin Simmons because you kept saying why not get even better. While I would have liked if the Ravens did that, I was one of the people that say, oh no, we good. This defense was stacked last year. We don't need another safety. Well. As, I, as it turned out, you were right. We could have definitely used some experience safety. Just like a lot of things I was wrong, the Ravens should have listened to you and got them. I remember those days. Yeah, we were big on the Ravens getting Justin Simmons. We were really hoping the Ravens would get Justin Simmons. Oh, we were really hoping. Oh, because I was like, Kyle Hamilton, he's a Marcus Lee. And you get, just, you get Justin Simmons too? Oh, my God. But they didn't do it, of course. And, yeah, he went over there to Atlanta, and I'm sure he would have been a lot better um, than – the guy who we got But it's all good um, He said I know I said I liked all guys In the wide receiver room But I'm going to stop Giving them credit Until they win the Super Bowl They do this to me every time It happened back in 2022 I believe maybe 21 But the Ravens wide receiver Said they were tired Of the disrespect And were going to show us I doubted them heavily But the first three games Of the season They really showed up big Duvernay and Bateman Were going off And I'm a firm believer In admitting when you are wrong So I thought hey Those guys are proving me wrong Let me give them their credit So I sent a comment in A uh, question from subs And then after that They immediately Completely fell off Then this year The last guy I was uh, like Hey slow down guys What's wrong with the wide receivers We have uh, and then Bateman and Nelson drop huge third down catches And then I look like a fool for telling people Hey guys uh, are great Or hey our guys are great And he said my bad for jinxing our guys You ain't jinxed nothing that, that was the, You didn't make them go out there and catch all them passes You don't make them go out there and drop any passes So they ain't got nothing to do with you uh, so it's all good. He said, sorry for the long comments and questions. I tried to separate them this time, so it's not just a long essay. Really appreciate the prep platform to voice my thoughts. and really appreciate you and team. Keep it clean for listening to me. No, no, it's all good. Ma I mean, Hubba.